Olive Dickinson, Métis woman, newspaper reporter, student of history, the arts, and philosophy. Everything had combined to bring her to the task of uncovering the big picture of human settlement in Canada, a story of the country's first peoples that began at least 10,000 years ago. This would be perhaps the biggest Canadian history research project ever undertaken, and it wasn't going to be easy. In the historical profession uh, until the 1960s, you studied history from writings, uh, diaries, newspapers, written materials which had been left from a past era. But First Nations people didn't leave written diaries and notes, so how could they be a people that you would study in a professional historical way? Olive, of course, uh, disagreed with that approach and uh, because if, to her, uh, First Nations people were not prehistorical people, but they were living and breathing people and she was an example. She was a professional writer. She was somebody who came to the university from having been um, a newspaper woman, of having written a lot of, uh, a lot of very interesting stories and who knew how to express herself and who knew how to articulate things. Now that was one benefit from those many years in, in journalism, where you learn to observe, to read, to pick up things from what you're reading, to read fast, and, uh, and, and try and present as equitable a picture as possible out of what you get. You're, you're not, you're not uh, arguing the, what the one side or the other. In the end, you try and let the facts speak for themselves. In 1972, she completed her master's degree with her thesis, Louisburg and the Indians, a study in imperial race relations, 1713 to 1760. It was a, in thèse magistrale, as we'd say in French, it was really a, a masterpiece uh, as a thesis for what it brought to our understanding of what was going on at Louisbourg. And, especially the, the connection with the native people. It's the scope of her learning that is tremendously admirable and uh, unusual among Canadian scholars. And that is something I admire very much. You can count on her. You can count that if she's written something, she's researched it thoroughly, that she knows what she's talking about, and uh, that you can trust her judgment because it's based on a tremendous amount of research and of learning. As Olive grew to understand the scope of her task, she began to see how to go about it. While working on her MA, she also produced a book, Indian Arts in Canada, with her former protege, Tom Hill. From then on, art would be a resource she would call on as she wove together an interdisciplinary approach to the study of history. She realized that you couldn't take a narrow historical approach. You had to, uh, to write First Nations history. You had to be multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. She uh, began to uh, look into art. Physical remains, costumes of First Nations people, the art that First Nations people had left. She began to look into anthropology and bring that into the, the study of history. So she began to take this multidisciplinary approach as, as well as the documentation which she found, uh, government documents, uh, for example, Indian agents who had been on reserves, their memoirs or uh, letters in the archives. Olive next moved on to the doctoral stage, the highest level of academic qualification. But Native history had never been the subject of a Canadian doctoral dissertation. There was no specialist in Canada who could direct and adjudicate such a thesis. But that didn't stop Olive Dickinson. She cleared a path through it all, gathering native oral histories and combining them with the original texts of the colonizers in the archives of England, Spain, and France. These accounts were abundant in their descriptions of Aboriginal societies, 
the early contact relationships, and the original jurisprudence which laid down the legal framework of how Aboriginal people would be overtaken and governed. No previous historian had sought out these documents, but the reporter Olive did, learning to read French and Spanish in the process. She published breakthrough histories that have become Canadian Studies textbooks. There was a lot more material available than was generally believed. Now you can argue that this was through European eyes, and most of it is, but a lot of it was very sympathetic to the Indians. And with the help of anthropology and the other sciences, you can make some very well-informed guesses as to what the situation actually was. 